Hey, it's Mike here, and today news on an age-extending gene that was discovered in naked mole rats. The key to longevity, just be a dick. Just literally be this. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with the body shape. It's actually the gene for hyaluronic acid that is special in these animals, which led to a bunch of really interesting research. And we're just gonna learn so much about hyaluronic acid in this video. Now, how is it that this little mole rat can live to like 40 years old when other rodents can't? Yeah, subtract the naked and the mole and you have domesticated pet rats normally live like two to four years with the longest at seven. Wild rats only live about one year. And we're also gonna look at if there are any dietary connections to boost hyaluronic acid in the meantime, well, we maybe wait decades if not forever for some type of drug to come out. So could this be the fountain of youth or people just making a fountain out of a molehill? Ayo, let's go. So hyaluronic acid, also known as hyaluronon, is something that's probably familiar to people in the skincare world. It's something that hydrates your skin, but this is something that is just pretty important in your body. It's pretty ubiquitous. It is in the fluid in your joints. It's in your brain. It's in your eyes and about half of it resides in your skin. And since your body's so used to it, it is an ingredient in cosmetic injections such as lip fillers. And this is, in terms of its molecular structure, a type of polysaccharide, which is essentially a chain of sugars. Another example of a polysaccharide is starch. Now, popular claim is that hyaluronic acid can hold 1,000 times its weight in water, but testing shows it is closer to about 50 times max, which is still amazing and enough to get the job done. And in terms of how much we have in our body at any given time, the average person might have around 15 grams, and a third of that, or about five grams, is turned over each day, which is really interesting. That means the average person has about seven or eight grams of hyaluronic acid in their skin. But what makes this so connected to aging? Well, it turns out that you know, a 75 year old person has only about a quarter of the amount of hyaluronic acid that they're producing as somebody who's you know 18 or 19 years old. And more benefits in a bit, but we gotta get to these sort of rodents and how they work. Well, from the University of Rochester, quote, unlike many other species, naked mole rats do not often contract diseases, including neurodegeneration, cardiovascular disease, arthritis, and cancer as they age. And the researchers who authored the main paper here have been searching for this mechanism and how it works for about 10 years. And a previous study for some background did find the actual gene that was responsible for the hyaluronic acid production as well as how it increases the lifespan and lowers the disease in the naked mole rats. But that brings us to the newest study. What is different here? What is newsworthy? Well, it's that they took that gene and they transferred it into mice and that helped them live longer and have lower disease. And yes, I am frustrated to be talking about a bunch of animal research because I don't think good things were happening to these little guys generally. But I will say, I am surprised with these naked mole rats that so much like hydration related genes were well expressed when they literally look like month old dried up hot dogs. <laughs> but perhaps their gene was boosted because they don't actually drink water for a fun fact. Yes, they just get it from the underground tubers and roots that they bite into. Also fun fact, their tunnels can be up to two and a half miles long and their two front teeth move independently, kind of like chopsticks. But in terms of the mouse study, I was surprised to see that there was only about a 4% increase in mouse lifespan, which makes me wonder like, how much would it really improve human lifespan when it's figured out? But it is worth mentioning that those mice had a better resistance against just spontaneous tumors and then also chemically induced tumors. You know that was ugly. And they also had lower levels of inflammation throughout their body. So we're seeing the mechanism in action there. But it makes me think that maybe this gene isn't all that's responsible for the naked mole rat's ability to fight disease. It, it might just be their tenacity. And directly from the paper, high molecular mass hyaluronic acid in particular reduced inflammation through several pathways, including direct immunoregulatory effect on immune cells, protection from oxidative stress, and improved gut barrier function during age. Aging. So we've got a lot going on here. So I had to wonder what is the scope of the benefits of hyaluronic acid, which brought me to this paper, which looked at not just 
endogenous or self-made hyaluronic acid, but also you know, pharmacological, like literally injected into you. It shows that it maintains connective tissue elasticity. Yeah, that it scavenges some free radicals and has an antioxidant effect, reduces inflammation, helps with skin matrix, you know, and much, much more like one study injecting it into people's sort of knee fluid and it helped with stiffness. And again, it seems to be that high molecular weight version that seems to be beneficial from this paper. The high weight one was associated with homeostasis or balance and protective action due to its ability to preserve tissue integrity, but the low molecular weight one indicates a pathological or pro-cancer activity. And this might be because lower molecular weight hyaluronic acid literally holds less water. And to the best of my understanding, this could just represent hyaluronic acid being broken down from some negative process. For example, UV exposure, UV light breaks down hyaluronic acid. And to be fully balanced here, there actually is a concern with higher hyaluronic acid and cancer, although it could just be a correlation or even reverse causation, you know, because you might see higher levels in somebody with cancer. But from this paper, hyaluronic acid likely does not play a causal role in cancer spreading. Rather, increased expression of hyaluronic acid genes may be a consequence of the spreading of cancer, which is also weird because isn't that the exact treatment for the mice that made them live longer? So wouldn't cancer make you live longer? I don't know, humans are complicated. We're all complicated. We'll see what happens. But for the final red flag, one study found that it could actually be used as fuel for pancreatic cancer. However, a lot of things in our body can be used as fuel for cancer, so. But I wanna get to more practical research in the meantime as we wait for this to be adapted to humans or for humans to be gene edited to have increased expression of this. Well, we can look at you know, what boosts hyaluronic acid. Hey, how about taking it orally as a supplement? It's available. I recently mentioned somebody that does this, the anti-aging billionaire Brian Johnson uh, with his Blueprint program. Yeah, he takes hyaluronic acid and in my video on him, I said, oh, this is probably just for skincare. It seems like that's the case. He doesn't say anything else on any of his sites that I can find about it having another effect. It might just be an added boost that it might be a longevity thing. He might just be taking it orally because a lot of sources say, you know, you can't absorb it into your skin. However, that's because the particle size is too big generally, but there are specific products with, you know, micronized or smaller, particles that can penetrate the skin a bit. So the next question becomes, can it even be absorbed orally? Is it something like collagen where our digestive system just blasts it down to 1% of the size that it originally was? Well, from this paper, again on mice, I'm sorry, I'm so, this is frustrating for me as well. They found that about 90% was absorbed in the digestive tract, but about 9% remained in the body several days later. One issue worth mentioning mentioning is that the dose in the study was 25 milligrams per kilogram. So someone like me would have to take about 2000 milligrams to match that amount. The researchers concluded after citing the lowering of levels through aging, the need in food applications for hyaluronic acid is increasing to supplement deficient hyaluronic acid. And a lot of supplements are available on the market. Like for example, this plant-based one, that's 250 milligrams. They also have some that go up to a thousand milligrams. And we have reviews on oral hyaluronic acid showing a trend of improving things like wrinkles. Yes, you can see the before and after in this study. Yeah, pretty compelling. Oh wait, that was funded by like Colgate Palmolive, which sells hyaluronic acid. And that's a pretty big trend. Also looking to this review on knee pain showing a lot of positive results. You know, we're talking generally brands testing their products often funded directly by the brand. Studies like these probably led to the addition of hyaluronic acid to various foods in China, sort of as a trend, like, oh, hyaluronic acid candy and chocolate, etc. But what about bone broth, which is pointed to as a source of hyaluronic acid? Studies are often, you know, 100 to 240 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. So we'll look into this product. We're looking at just about 50 milligrams. You'd have to do several servings, which is of course quite sketchy when you consider the potential for lead contamination in bone broth that studies like this voice a concern about. But despite those good results in the studies, I have to, you know, at least express a little bit of doubt here because again, if we have 15 grams or 15,000 milligrams of hyaluronic acid in our body at any given time, and 
a third or 5,000 of that is turning over every day, then what is a supplement of a few hundred milligrams gonna do, especially when maybe only 10% of it is absorbed as we saw from mice studies. And then especially 50 milligrams of it from bone broth, you know, that's talking like 1% of what our body needs to replace each day. However, the body is mysterious and I can't help but think that maybe for older people who are like in their 60s or 70s that just have way lower hyaluronic acid levels, if it's 75% lower, that would be what? Only a few grams in there. So if you can build it up through supplementation a little bit, maybe that's enough to make a difference. Or maybe it's just not a linear relationship. Maybe we don't need to compete with the 5,000 milligrams. Maybe just a few hundred can be used by our body to make a difference or the randomized control trials have something sketchy going on to sell more supplements, who knows? In the meantime though, before we get these magical gene therapies <laughs> or whatever, it's probably more prudent to just try and do the best we can in terms of preserving and making our own hyaluronic acid, which brings me to dietary choices. Yeah, back to that Rochester article, the researchers believe they can accomplish keeping hyaluronic acid up by slowing down degradation or by enhancing synthesis. Well, one food that has been pointed to as potentially preventing the breakdown of hyaluronic acid is oranges because they contain something that can inhibit the enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid, which is known as hyaluronidase. This orange chemical is known as naringenin. However, another study put a bunch of different plant-based compounds up against each other, and of those, they all worked you know, pretty well, but naringenin was the weakest. At the top of the list was rutin, which is highest in buckwheat, in particular, tartary buckwheat, which apparently is tart, and I've never had it. <laughs> Have you? But don't throw away the oranges just yet because the second most effective one was also pretty high in oranges and that is hesperidin. Mint has it too. We also have miracetin, probably butchering that in berries. That did pretty well. And we also have genistein in soy. A lot of what we're talking about here are plant flavonoids. And I should just mention this little sort of bulletin from a presentation from 2023. This research hasn't been published yet, but these researchers are claiming that plant flavonoids can inhibit hyaluronidase to help remyelinate damaged nerve cells, which would be in diseases like MS, where your nerve cells get demyelinated and that myelin sheath is basically the insulation for those cells. That's what leads to MS in motor neurons. Definitely gonna keep my eye on that research, but in the meantime, I should also mention that just a ton of these plant-based antioxidants appear to inhibit hyaluronidase. I mean, there's just table that goes forever. But soy might be a one-two punch of goodness, which brings me to the second one, which would be increasing your own hyaluronic acid production in your body. Well, those soy phytoestrogens and plant phytoestrogens in general, quote, exert an anti-aging effect on the skin via estrogen receptors. They increase the collagen content the production of hyaluronic acid and extracellular matrix protein, so skin integrity. And they also show protection against oxidative stress. And that's basically skin aging can be delayed. That's all pretty epic. And another one that could help with production is magnesium, which appears to be involved in the process of making hyaluronic acid directly. We can also go to another EFTA mouse study where they put some human skin cells in mice and they found that magnesium supplementation upregulated the same genes that were overclocked in the naked mole rats. They conclude, quote, magnesium may play a pivotal role in maintaining the skin barrier function and magnesium supplementation may be useful to enhance moisturization and wound repair in the skin. We definitely need some human studies there. Come on, bring on the human studies. You're just gonna be giving people magnesium. It's not that hard. And of course, in case you're wondering, all of the highest foods in terms of magnesium are plant foods. We're talking things like chocolate and nuts and seeds with pumpkin seeds being a pretty big winner, as well as beans and avocado. So plants for the win there. So in the end, we have a lot of conceptually interesting but ethically concerning research on one rodent after another. But I will say naked mole rats, fascinating, 
cute in their own way, kind of like those hairless dogs. There does actually seem to be a benefit for hyaluronic acid, pretty well supported, having enough in our body, you know, we have it there for a reason. As we age, it goes down and we see these negative effects. And yeah, we're still gonna need to wait until there are medications in humans, which again are focused on production and lowering the breakdown for hyaluronic acid. Well, guess what can do that? Yeah, various plant-based compounds. And we have all of those antioxidants and flavonoids, which inhibit that enzyme that breaks it down. And then we have things like magnesium and these phytoestrogens in plants that can boost the production, which is amazing. And let me know down below what you thought about all of this. I was just happy to learn more about hyaluronic acid because it is fascinating, ubiquitous, and it plays a role in so much, you know, skin health and on and on, brain health, which we didn't even get into very much. So if you learned something too, of course, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.